Welcome to American National Government, Section 1578. I am Jonathan Parker, your instructor for the next 16 weeks. Um, glad to have you on board. There are 26, probably going to be 27 of you, so this is a jam-packed online section, but I think we're all up for the challenge. And let us begin with the syllabus. Now there's a lot of important information here on the syllabus. I know this is the lecture everybody wants to tune out for. You're getting a syllabus quiz immediately afterwards. I don't advise you do that. Um, so here we go. Don't worry about what the FICE code is. That's just uh, to make sure that your class, this class transfers when you go to your four-year institution. So, uh, first things first, here's my email, j-o-n-a-t-h-a-n dot parker at i-c-c dot e-d-u. This is a problem every semester. Uh, it's, it gets spelled j-o-h-n, j-o-h-n-o-t-h. You know, it's, I get all sorts of very weird spellings of my first name. This was the way to spell Jonathan when I was born way back in 1890. Um, my name's here. My name spelled correctly here. My name should be on your schedule. Uh, if not that, it's here. I mean, there's no real excuse for you not to know how to correctly spell my name, because then students get very mad about me not responding to emails. I can't respond to emails that I never got. Uh, my office, I didn't have any online students come see me last semester. I hope that changes, but I share room 216C uh, with other faculty members. Stop by Monday, Wednesday. I've got a big long break between my classes, 11.45 to 1.30. Tuesday, I'm just kind of there for a little bit, 1.15 to 1.45 p.m. I will hold other office hours by appointment if you ask. I have a second job. I have a one-year-old daughter. I'm in grad school. I'm busy myself. I'm very happy. I will bend over backwards to try to help you all. But we have to find a mutually agreeable time to meet. All right? That's it. We can coordinate a meeting if you wish to exercise that option. I'd love it if, if that happened. Because, again, I don't know if you're having trouble unless you tell me. But with everything going on in your life, with everything going on in my life, we have to find a place where we can meet in the middle and have a, have a meeting. All right? Please reach out. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns during the semester, please reach out. Remember, teachers cannot read minds. This is a really common misconception with students. Teachers cannot read minds. I won't know that you are having difficulty unless you tell me. Reach out if you need help. Uh, I'm available by email. Otherwise, that seems to be the option that um, you all prefer. And we'll endeavor to get back to you within one business day of your inquiry. Um, if you get me on the day of, if you send an email on, say, Tuesday at 11 o'clock at night, and I respond at 11.02, you got lucky. Uh, that would typically wait until the next day, the next business day. So an email sent on Monday will be answered by Tuesday at the latest. An email sent on Friday, on the other hand, will be answered by the following Monday at the latest. Saturday and Sunday are not business days. Again, if you... I might just happen to pop on my email or my phone might ping. If that's the case, you got lucky. So I'll let you read the modality description and the course description. We don't need to go through that. Um, we don't need to really go through B either. Materials of instruction. All right, the book. Um, I won't say that the course is really heavy on the book. I tend to use my own stuff, uh, but we do use it. So we'll be able to maybe use it a, a, a medium amount. I don't know how else to put that. So um, I understand that it is an expensive 
um, that everybody's feeling the pinch right now, me included, uh, in terms of money. Uh, so, I mean, if there's some situation where you really can't afford the book or there's you know, some other thing going on, I, I'm happy to try, try to help you. I, I won't promise results. It depends on what your situation you come to me with. The book looks like this. Uh, O'Connor and Sabato, American Government Roots and Reforms, the 14th edition. The bookstore has the right edition. Okay, the ICC bookstore has the right edition. This was uh, a problem in the past because of the way the bibliographic information appears here versus how the bookstore has it. We used to, once upon a time, um, and I keep this because there are still students around that were there it, there when this change happened. This book is no longer offered as part of an inclusive access course. It, it used to be that the book was uh, able to be accessed online. And you no, know, we couldn't get all the students on the book consistently. We hit about 85, 90%. Um, so we... You, you can't run a class like that, so you know, with leaving 10% or 15% of the students out, so we just went back to the old uh, paperback book. So uh, this book is no longer offered online. Please plan on renting it through the ICC bookstore or other provider. You don't have to do the ICC bookstore. If you can find it somewhere cheaper, by all means, uh, rent it through that or buy it through that or whatever you want. Make sure you send me an email because... Um, I'll put it up and let the other students know where they could get it more cheaply. Uh, virtual handouts provided by the instructor. So I'll put a handouts up on the virtual handouts up on Canvas. Uh, maybe the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Virginia Statute of Religious Freedom. These two I always want to do lessons on, but we always run out of time. I, I remain hopeful. That's why they stay on the syllabus. Uh, Washington's Farewell, Eisenhower's Farewell, the Federalist and Anti-Federalist Papers. These last four we consistently read, so plan on those. Okay. Course policies. Unless we use Flipgrid for an assignment, Flipgrid is a, a video app, um, everything you turn in must be a Microsoft Word document that you attach to an email, send to me, or turn in through Canvas. We're probably going to just be turning things in via Canvas. I got way too much uh, flack for doing Flipgrid last semester. The students were just not having it, and I don't really want to fight about it anymore. So uh, we might try Flipgrid once or twice. I don't know. I haven't quite made up my mind yet. Um, We'll probably just be do the do it the old boring online, you know, submission way. Um, academic citation etiquette. Now this is very important uh, to me. So whenever you turn in a written assignment, you were required to cite your source if you use a direct quote from a book, article, website, etc. You paraphrase a chunk of a text from the book, your article, website, etc. You present a theory, argument, opinion that doesn't belong to you. You should acknowledge other people's ideas, theories, etc., etc. If they're not your own, okay. I'm going after a graduate certificate in history. I, I, I'm not in a place where I'm having a lot of original ideas yet, and that's fine. So the authors I do read, uh, like this was a book I had to read, get through, the State Visits of Edward VII, who was a king of the United Kingdom. You know, he, he said, the guy says on, Matthew Glenn Cross says on page 45, it cannot be argued that the Kaiser had much effect on actual British policy details. Okay, so I'd say Glenn Cross says that the Kaiser did not have much of an effect on British policy details. And then maybe I put a page 45 after that. And that's how you acknowledge that the idea wasn't yours, and you didn't, you weren't the one who thought that up or came you know, across that information. 
Uh, at the end of your written assignments, you are required to provide a list of sources that you have utilized for the assignment. Please do. I, you're going to regret it if you don't, in terms of your grade. We will use the latest version of MLA, MLA 9. Uh, for bibliographies and inline citations, use the template in the following link to construct your bibliography. I took the thinking right out of it for you. So you click on this, uh, you cut and paste the website you were using, or input the book information, or whatever it is. Um, you don't have to use this site either. I, I know there are a million and one bibliography making sites. Uh, this is just one that I put in for your reference. So inline citations are also expected in any writing assignments that you turn in where you have used outside sources. Academic honesty is important, if not in other classes, in mine. All right, I know what a community college student sounds like I've been at this long enough. Uh, I won't discount the fact that you're the next Charles Dickens or William Faulkner or you know you're some you're a great writer uh, but uh, in my experience the majority of you sound a, a certain way in your writing. So if you try to put one over on me it's it's not gonna work. I've been at this too long. All right, if you have any doubts, please just create a citation for it. Don't take chances with your grade. Um, just don't take chances. I'm never going to take points off for citing something you didn't need to. If The worst thing that's going to happen is I'm going to make a comment saying, hey, you didn't need to cite. Uh, what was his name? Matthew Glenn Cross uh, on page three, like you did. That's it. Your, your grade will be unaffected. All right, Wikipedia is not an academic resource. Wikipedia is still not an academic resource. Wikipedia is not now and never will be an academic resource. Do not cite Wikipedia in any work that you do this semester. It will negatively impact your grade. How will it negatively impact my grade, Mr. Parker? Answer, do you really want to find out? Just don't do it. Don't do it. And I know there are all sorts of arguments out there about why Wikipedia is good. Wikipedia doesn't fly with me. And I hate to pull rank, you are in my class. So please do not use Wikipedia. All right, uh, academic misconduct plagiarism says that the handbook says to sum it up, if you choose to engage in academic misconduct or plagiarize based on the severity of the offense, the instructor may recommend failure for an assignment or failure for the course. Multiple instances of academic misconduct could include sanctions up to dismissal from the college. And I'll just summarize the next little bit. First time I catch you plagiarizing, you're, you get, I'm failing you for the assignment. It doesn't matter if it's a one-point assignment or a hundred-point assignment. You fail it, you don't get to redo it at all at any time. Period. End of discussion. Second time I catch you plagiarizing, and I hope there wouldn't be a second time or even a first time, but the second time I fail you for my course. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. You fail the course. You're out. That's it. I don't like exercising that option, but I have done, and I will again. Late submissions, I do not accept late work as a rule. Uh, I get that stuff happens, you know, if a circumstance like an illness or death in the family does occur, make sure you talk to me. I'll usually let you turn it in. Now, if we get to a point in the semester where you've you know, where your uh, eighth grandmother has died. Okay, I might start to get a little suspicious about where you are and what you're doing and your dedication to this course and to your education. 
But uh, other than that, you know, it, I, I'll just usually I'll just take your word for it unless you've given me a reason not to trust you. We have the standard 10-point grading scale, methods of presentation you can read. Now this is what you really wanted to know about your grade. There will be two tests, each worth 150 points. Quizzes. Um, I've done big point quizzes. I've done a lot of little point quizzes, uh, at least 100 points. You'll take a pretest uh, your first week. Again, you get full credit just for attempting this. You'll take it at the end of the semester where your grade is whatever you get. Uh, 100 points on the Federalist Paper assignments, 90 points on the book assignments. Uh, I, I throw in classwork and homework from week to week if I find something interesting, something I think might enhance your learning. Um, it's different every semester what I, what I throw up there. I mean, I, I could come across something in the news, you know, uh, read this article, write a response to it in terms of what you know about the Fourth Amendment or something like that. Uh, possible college mandated essay. If I can get us out of this, I will. Um, but the school's getting pretty insistent on assessment again. The final is 20% of your grade. And we'll talk about that when the final comes around. Uh, probably not going to have one essay. Uh, final exam, two other tests. One of the tests might be an essay. It probably won't be. Probably won't. So, uh, news resources. I tried to put some together. I mean, that, that were fairly center. Um, some lean right. I mean, Illinois policies are more right. Uh, Politico is more left. NPR is pretty center. Uh, BBC, actually. Uh, I find, at least, just my just my opinion, uh, that uh, foreign news outlets cover us uh, a little better and a little more fairly than our own media does. Miscellaneous. Uh, don't take a test and forget about the material. It's going to come back to haunt you. So, like... Uh, we cover federalism pretty early in the course. Then you have a test one on Friday, February 17th. Okay, we'll cover political parties, campaigns, presidency, Congress, the Supreme Court. You're going to have test two on March 31st. Guess what's going to come on test two? You're going to see a question or two about federalism. This is one of those topics. Without federalism, well... The rest of this is uh, not worth a whole lot, to be quite honest. Uh, you will be hearing and dealing with everything we study throughout the semester. Keep your notes and study. You may see test questions from the first test on the final. That's true. You might. Um, it is not the responsibility of the instructor to chase you down to make sure you're keeping up with your work. And that's true. If you miss, if you start missing assignments, if you're not, if you start not turning in assignments, I mean, this has happened in the past. I'm not going to say anything. I'm, I've got way too many students, and I need about 36 to 48 hours in the day. Uh, you're, you're just going to start seeing zeros in Blackboard, and then I'm going to get an email like, "What the heck?" You know, and that's how it goes. So if you miss something during class, and that's a bit of a typo, but oh well. If you miss some, I guess that works too. If you miss some time during class, you must ask me or a classmate what, if anything, you missed. If you choose not to do this, do not be surprised if you start seeing a lot of zeros on campus. Something. Uh, attendance. Attendance is another big one. So uh, basically, without reading this verbatim, uh, you need to log into class and complete assignments. This constitutes attendance for an online anytime course. If you do not log into class, if you do not do assignments, uh, when it comes time for non-attenders uh, non and never-attenders, which is the college, uh, 
complying with state law to see who's taking advantage of financial aid. If you're not logging on regularly, so say you log on the first day and never again, or you never do any work, I mean, what's you know, what's the point of being in the class if you never do any work? Uh, you're probably going to be dropped. Probably, if that happens. So, 5% uh, of classes, so says the college, uh, missed during a semester constitute an excessive number of absences for a class and may merit being dropped. Just log into class. It, it's... Turn in an assignment, you know, make it easy on yourself. The uh, thing that I, I notice and have noticed uh, since, I guess it's not over, but the pandemic ended and we all got back on campus and everything and, you know, the students who take these types of classes tend to um, you know, sign up for five or six online classes, uh, overload themselves, and then get into uh, trouble when it comes time, you know, for a midterm report or uh, a non-attender and never attender because you could be very busy in three of your classes but never log on to mine. And then it comes time I have to drop you and Students, well, what can I do to make up the grade or not be dropped? The answer is really nothing. So uh, just make sure, you know, you're keeping up with all your work if you're one of those students and you choose to sign up for five online classes. So take away, just keep an open line of communication with me, and you're going to be fine. You'll learn something. You might even enjoy yourself. Stranger things have happened, folks. Just email me. If you email me, if you're keeping an open line of communication, I will work with you. Okay, there's there's very few times where there's been a problem that we haven't been able to solve if you are communicating with me regularly. Um, not like, say, last semester this happened very regularly. Uh, we came to a test. It opened Friday, February 17th at 12.01, say, and it closed Sunday, February 19th at 11.59 p.m., and I got a slew of emails on Monday, February 20th at 12.15 a.m. explaining why uh, students A, B, C, and D couldn't take the test and demanding that it be reopened. So we're not going to do that. Take the test Friday, take the test Saturday. Don't wait until the last minute to get your work in. All right, projected course schedule. I'll let you look at that. You don't need me to run through that with you. Just keep in mind the test dates. The test dates. Final exam. Don't know how that's going to work quite yet, but here's everything. Martin Luther King, Junior Day, January 16th. The midterm is March 10th which is also my birthday, by the way. Spring break, March 13th to March 17th. Uh, last day of classes is May 8th, and then finals May 9th to 15th. Um, guest lecture. I always try to bring in one or two people. I haven't had a whole lot of luck with that in these last, well, post-pandemic, really. Uh, but I like to have learned people come in and speak, too the class um, if they are able and willing to do that. Now, um, when that happens, when that has happened, I have been accused of political bias. Look, folks, I'll just let me put that to rest right now. If I'm bringing somebody in to speak, it's two, maybe three reasons. One, they know what they're talking about. They're good at their job. And two, they don't charge. They're doing it as a favor to me. So, Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, Green, there's no indoctrination going on 
in a, if, if a guest lecturer comes on, it's main reason they're not charging me. I don't get a budget to bring guests in. So, uh, I reserve the right to add or subtract from any part of the syllabus as the semester progresses. I'll make every attempt to notify you through Canvas and or uh, email. So now we come to the planned assignments. We are doing more work than the planned assignments, but these are just the ones that I can tell you we're definitely going to do right now. Uh, you can read through this on your own. Federalist Papers. Here's a handy link. I'll take you right to the full text of the Federalist Papers. Uh, I have a worksheet, which is right here that you're going to fill out uh, for Federalist 10, 47, 49, 50, 51. All right. Again, don't make the mistake of just filling out a worksheet for number 10 or thinking that you can just pick one. You can't. You're going to fill out a worksheet for all five. And uh, whether we turn that in on Flipgrid or post it on Canvas, I haven't made up my mind yet. All right, then you're going to do the same thing with the Anti-Federalist Papers. So the Federalist Papers were advocating for passage of the Constitution. The Anti-Federalist Papers took the opposite view. The Constitution should not be passed. The Articles of Confederation are fine. So if we do Flipgrid, and after watching your videos, you know, if I think you're winging it, I'm going to ask to see your, your notes, your analysis sheets. So again... This is the sheet I want you to fill out for the Federalist Papers, and you're going to fill out a sheet for every one. And then the Anti-Federalist Papers, it's a slightly different worksheet, and you're going to fill those out. Book assignments. So, um, again, I have Flipgrid, but we may just turn it in over Canvas. You can read the... the these by yourself. I mean, these are the three book assignments we're going to do. I have a handy calendar of the assignment due dates right here. Keep in mind, these are not the only assignments we're doing. These are just the ones I, I know for sure are going to be completed this semester. All right. So that is the syllabus you are going to have a syllabus quiz uh, now that you should take that uh, covers what we talked about. I look forward to a great semester of us collaboratively working together. And you should feel free, again, to reach out with any questions. Have a good week, guys.